Module 2, Objective 4, be able to list the major functions of the skin and describe how these functions help maintain physiological homeostasis. The integument is the largest organ system in the body, comprising about 16% of body weight. It is our first line of defense. The integument is made up of two distinct parts. You have the skin, known as the cutaneous membrane, and the accessory structures that support the skin. The cutaneous membrane has two components. There is an outer epidermis, which consists of a, an epithelium, and there's an inner dermis, which is connective tissue. Remember, anytime you have an epithelial layer underneath, the epithelial or deep to the epithelial layer is always connective tissue. So the epidermis is the epithelial layer and the dermis is the supportive connective tissue. The accessory structures of the skin originate in the dermis, though they extend through the epidermis onto the surface of the skin. And they include hair, nails, and glands. Underneath the dermis is the subcutaneous layer, or the hypodermis where hypo means, uh, refers to below dermis. This is also connective tissue, um, and <coughs> it is the site for hypodermic injection. So the needle of a hypodermic needle is just long enough to penetrate the epidermis, penetrate the dermis, and to deliver the product directly into the hypodermis. Here we have sort of a diagram of the cutaneous membrane and the hypodermis. You can see the epidermis right here um, is the superficial most region. You have the dermis underneath and then down here where all this fat tissue is uh, you have the hypodermis. Again there's a lot going on in the skin. We have hair follicles, we have um, sweat glands that deliver their products, sweat to the surface. You have oil glands that deliver their product um, into the hair follicle. You have lots of nerve endings. Um, you even have some muscle in terms of the erector pili muscle. In terms of functions of skin, um, I think first and foremost it protects. It's going to cover and uh, the entire surface of the body and it's going to create sort of a watertight um, layer. It prevents water from getting in, uh, not 100%, but to some degree. So it's very protective. In fact, when people suffer from things like burns where a certain amount of surface area of skin is removed, those individuals are prone to secondary bacterial infections. So it's not the burn that is of concern, but it's the loss of that, the skin and the exposure of the tissue underneath and the proneness of that tissue to become infected. In addition to protection, uh, the skin excretes salt. We excrete water, even some organic waste products. We use the skin in maintaining body temperature. If you think about the way the skin insulates, but also uh, you can lose temperature or heat through evaporation. Our skin is used to make or synthesize vitamin D. This is the sunshine vitamin. And there'll be more, <laughs> that's horrible scribble, but there's, there's more, um, we'll learn more about vitamin D shortly. We store lipids in the uh, skin, especially down in the hypodermis. Um, and then it is our first opportunity to detect touch and pressure, as well as pain and temperature um, our first contact with the environment. Here we just have a, a diagrammatic breakdown. Uh, it includes a list of those functions, but the integumentary system consists of the cutaneous membrane and the accessory structures. And then we can see the cutaneous membrane is further divided into the epidermis and dermis. And then under accessory structures, we have hair, glands, and nails.